All right, in this video, we are going to look at some principles of relational databases. So I want to get some common terminology established. And relational databases use uh, database tables to store data, and these tables have relations to other tables. Now, this is based on a relational model that was first proposed by Edgar F. Todd in 1969. So this concept has been around for a very long time. Now, nearly all modern relational databases use SQL for data definition and manipulation. And I say nearly all, all of them, as far as I know, <laughs> actually use it. But I'm sure if I say, come on, say all of them, someone's going to come back with some obscure database saying, hey, this database doesn't use it. But uh, to my knowledge, just about any modern database that you're going to be using, relational database that is, is going to support SQL, and that's a structured query language. And we're going to be diving into that a lot more into this course, obviously. Now, uh, relational databases are the most widely used databases in the world. They are all over the place. Everything from smartphones, uh, there's actually little databases in your smartphones for sure. Desktops use them. Uh, your automobiles, they are going to have databases on them. And then highly popular in businesses. So businesses really rely upon these. Uh, any type of any business, governments, anybody that needs to store data, uh, relational database, highly popular. Now, I envision a database table, it's a lot like a spreadsheet. That's the way I kind of envision in my head. So if you're familiar with spreadsheets, it's going to be uh, pretty easy to start envisioning how a database table works. Your data is kept in columns and rows. Now, a column is very important. Each column is, gets a unique name and it's important that it is unique to that table, and it's a human-readable form of the column. And it should be descriptive, like first name, last name, address, city, state, stuff like that. I do see some systems that use generated stuff, and they come up with like A, B, T, underscore, 1, 2, 3, and that, that really has no uh, That becomes rather cryptic, and uh, databases like that become very difficult to work with because you have a hard time remembering what these abbreviation system-generated values are for. And then uh, the column is also going to have a data type assigned to it. And that type can be a string, a date, a time, number. And this is a, a pretty meaty topic. I'm going to be diving into uh, data types a lot more in a future lecture. But I just want you to be aware right now to be aware that that column does have a specific data type. And then there's uh, constraints that we can place on the column. And now, these are not mandatory, but we can say is a value required. This is known as a null check, null being nothing. And so we can say that the column must have a value assigned to it when we're creating a database record. And then we can like specify the length of the string. So if we have a first name, we can say that first name can be up to 50 characters in the database. And that there's other constraints that we can get into. Those would be covered in upcoming lectures. Now, when we take a, a row of the database, that row becomes a distinct database record. So if we have like first name, last name, an example, that becomes what's known as a database record. Now going back uh, here, I got my example database table, and this is the characters out of burn notice. We can see here at the top, the top row there, and that's the database column name. So first name, last name, address, city, state, and zip. Those are all database column names. And then look on line two there, Michael Weston, that Michael Weston at 123 Brickell, Miami, Florida, 33135, that is a database record. And then a quick fun fact here, I got a picture of Barry there. Barry's the uh, money launderer out of burn notice. And if you notice, Barry does kind of look like uh, my logo there down at the bottom of the screen or on top also. So Barry was a little bit influential when I went to design my, my logo. I thought it'd be fun to have. Uh, spiky hair on my little character's head there. Now we have a primary key. So a primary key is optional. It's optional, and you rarely see database tables without a primary key. But this is a special database column or columns that is used to uniquely identify a database record. And I have a note here saying that it is optional, but this is highly not recommended. It's pretty rare that you see a database without a primary key. Now, it must be unique. So, like a Highlander, there can be only one. So, that's a, I think it came out around 1996 for you old movie buffs there. Now, here, 
Oh, we've got examples of our, our database table that we just looked at. It could be first name, last name. It could be first and last name. So the, the problem here, I think if we're going to be building up this table, obviously we're probably going to find Michael. That's a fairly common name, especially in the U.S. Fiona's not that terribly common, but uh, Michael and Sam certainly are. So we would probably hit a conflict really quick. Now we could have uh, Michael Weston make that our unique key, and we're going to get away with that pretty well. But if we start getting a lot more records in there, my name is John Thompson, and there's a lot of John Thompsons in, in the world. So that would not work very fast. Now a way to get around that known as a what's called a surrogate key. Now the surrogate key is a special type of primary key, and this is going to use a unique generated value. Now, this value should have no business value, and it should never change. So that primary key of the table, the surrogate key, must be unique and non-changing. And often this is done underneath the cover, so you'll see databases, and they will have a surrogate key on them. But inside the application running on top of that database, you'll never see it. So it's kind of like a, for system use. Typically, this is going to be a, a self-incrementing number. Different databases have different ways of incrementing this number. There's a number of techniques, and we will be getting into that in the course. Then it can also be a unique string. So it, the database says that surrogate key or primary key must be unique. So it doesn't matter if it's a number or a string to most databases. A UID is, I can't remember the metrics on it, but it's, I think it's a 32-character string, if I remember right. I could be wrong on that. <laughs> but this is a long string of random alphanumeric bits or characters and it's like grains of sand so it's like very a very 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 unique value now using a surrogate key is considered a best practice in a relational database design so i've worked with a number of databases worked with databases that did not have surrogate keys where they were doing something like uh, first name last name and concatting that and it is really awful to work with so modern databases generally this been well adopted, but you may encounter databases where this is not being used, especially older databases that have been around for a very long time. You might see that, but it's a, a very poor practice, and we'll be getting into relational database in an upcoming lecture, uh, best practices. Now, I need to talk about database table relations. These are done through what's called a foreign keys constraint, so this is going to work within conjunction of primary keys. And there's three primary relations that we want to be looking at. The first one is called a one-to-one -one relation. So a record in table A matches exactly one record in table B. You see this a lot of times to define an attribute or something or extend out the table. And then one-to-many, this is a very, very common type of relationship that's used. You will see this quite a bit. And this is where a record in table A matches many records in table B, but table B only has one record in table A. A good example, this is going to be an order with multiple lines. So if I place an order up on Amazon.com and I buy three items, I'm going to have an order that has like order type data, who I am, what my name is, where it's going, and then I'll have multiple line items associated with that order of the stuff that I got from Amazon. Yeah. Another type of relationship is many to many, and this is where many records match Records in table A, or table A matches to table B, and vice versa. Table B matches many records to table A. So this gets a little confusing to work with, but a good example would be like students and courses. So many students will roll in many different courses, but the courses will also have many students in them. So uh, kind of a many to many relationship. I'll show you an example here, and we will get more concrete examples on that. So this is called a entity relationship diagram, and that's the diagram on the right. And that this is a, a set of tables, and what this is doing is helping you visualize the relationships between them. So I just talked about the many-to-many, -many. so we have a course and students, so that you can see here how those are our relationship. In the diagrams, you can see us on the right-hand side there, one-to-one -one is just a straight line. This is one way of noting it, and then you can see there on the diagram they have two lines there. So when you're looking at ERD, and Entity Relationship Diagrams, the software that produces them, it will, it depends on who made it. So as to the diagrams that it, it uses. And then uh, one-to-many is a straight line with, okay, 
It reminds me of crow's feet there. So with three lines sticking out like that. And then finally, many, many, you'll, you'll see it not, noted with the three lines on each side of it. So that this helps you visualize how the relationships are, are done. So let's take a closer look at a one to many relationship and help you visualize that. So the table that we've been working with, I named it customer now. So my burn notice cast is my customers. And let's say we just completed a successful mission and we're going out for a round of drinks and we're going to track the drinks that we're having. Now you can see Michael Weston has a D of one, two, four. And over there on my drink order table, we can see on the first line, one, two, three, four, record ID one, two, 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 four, nine, uh, Michael ordered a scotch. You can see him sipping a, a nice scotch. And then again, on uh, midway down, you can see on one, two, 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 five, five, Michael also had ordered another scotch. So the team stuck around and had a, a second round of drinks. And you can see how that relationship uh, builds out there. So if you can visualize this, Michael, uh, actually everybody in, in the in this example has two records in drink order. So it helps me visualize when I'm, I'm kind of thinking that way. You could combine this out and just like think that if we took the first customer table, we could repeat the Michael Weston record twice and just put two scotch lines there for him. So it, there's different ways you can think about this. We're just, just doing this for the first time is setting up this relationship. Uh, we will be getting into this a lot in the course. So if you don't fully grasp this, don't worry. We're going to see it. We'll start off simple and we will get more and more examples of this as we progress through the course. Now I do want to show you a more complex ERD. So you can see when you get to larger database systems, you can get a lot of tables involved. And this is something I just literally found on the internet. We're not going to get into it right now. I do have some pretty more or very more interesting examples coming up in the course. And by the end of the course, you'll be feel comfortable working with this. So don't sweat the details on this right now. This is just a more example or more complex example. I wanted you to see how large database systems can get. If I remember right, PeopleSoft had like 30,000 different database tables. So it's just crazy. So you can get some very, very large systems. Relational database systems are built to handle uh, many, many tables, thousands and thousands of tables, and literally billions and billions of rows of data. So that's what they're built for. That's what they're optimized for. So you can get into some very, very complex scenarios and modeling your data. And there's actually people that specialize. They make uh, their living at just being data modelers for large enterprises. So we are just getting into it, so do not be intimidated at this point in the course. You will feel a lot more comfortable with it by the time we get to the end of the course.